In recent days and weeks, we have seen a number of terror attacks around the globe. The tragic images from France as human beings were being crushed by a madman behind the wheel of a truck. The bodies of children in a German McDonald's, they and their parents lured there by a mentally ill teenager who had been planning the attack for a year, both of which were immediately deemed by some to be Islamic terror related. And to this moment, nothing more than inane knee jerks from those with agendas. No connection. Yet there are also incidents such as the failed Syrian asylum seeker who packed explosives, screws and other metal pieces into his backpack and blew himself up in another cowardly homicide bombing, which because of his time spent in the squalid conditions of a refugee camp, could have indeed been the work of a radicalized individual twisting religion to his purposes. The point being, we simply do not know. And tagging things as Islamic terror does more harm than good as the world fights to eradicate the Muslim-inspired and directed terrorists, the real ones. Your take on what you are about to hear is necessary to move the conversation forward. Get on the line right now. Get ready to deal out your comments at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. Let's begin there. Welcome back, President and founder of the Republican Muslim Coalition, seeking to put an American face on the issue and convince a certain presidential candidate he should temper his comments about American Muslims and those around the world. Saba Ahmed joins us here on the hard line. Saba, it's always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. I know that in the time that we have spent with you and the interviews that we have had, you have always wanted to have that audience with Donald Trump. And last time we spoke, it was still promised. Has it happened yet? Well, I attended the Republican National Convention last week, got a chance to have lunch with Donald Trump and Mike Pence and several other elected officials. It was an amazing experience talking to Mike Pence and Donald Trump's campaign manager specifically about the need for Muslim American outreach. I had a great time and I'm very hopeful that in the next few months that we will be working much more in partnership with the Donald Trump campaign and we will see uh, him be more presidential. I was glad to see he never mentioned the Muslim ban on his Thursday night acceptance speech. He talked about banning folks from countries, state sponsors of terrorism, which I totally agree with. I think we should be wedding every single person that comes into the United States and I think he will find a lot of allies within the Muslim com uh, community here. That's interesting because, and again, he has not just gone, he hasn't gone backward on the Muslim ban, he's actually expanded it recently because on Meet the Press he talked about, he said, I actually don't think it's a rollback. In fact, you could say expansion of his Muslim ban. I'm okay with that when people are upset when you use the word Muslim because I'm talking territory instead of being Muslim. There are those people who say that he's going forward with it and he's even more dedicated to stopping every single Muslim from coming in this country. How do you feel about that when in essence, he's not rolling back. He's moving forward. I think I don't agree with that. I think his position on a religious discrimination will be challenged significantly, not only through the Congress, but courts, if he does actually choose to go down that route. But I think in the last six months, he has uh, learned quite a bit about uh, the challenging the m entire Muslim community. Holding 1.7 billion Muslims accountable for the actions of a few terrorists is not the right solution. And there is no specific religious test and it's very unconstitutional. I was glad to see Mike Spence come to the ticket which because he brings a balanced perspective and I hope that you know he uh, both of them will work with Congress to enact laws that benefit all Americans without discriminating against any but one particular group. Does it does it bother you at all because Mike Pence at one time back in December called Donald Trump's idea on Muslims entering the United States offensive and unconstitutional. Now he says he is very supportive of Donald Trump's call. He seems to have done a complete 180. How have things changed and how does that affect? Because you say you're, you're very thankful to see him there. So I would imagine that you got a good feeling about this not being as as caustic, I guess, as some people would call it. I think. I had a good time because I even saw, like, you know, there was Muslims for Trump. He led Muslim prayer at the RNC. He is really trying to reach out to Muslims. I don't think he's uh, intending to offend millions of Muslim Americans. I got a chance to talk to Newt Gingrich in detail about his views on Sharia. And I had fascinating conversations because I felt like everybody is struggling with Islam and how to distinguish it from radicals and extremists. And it, in order to solve the problems, they have to engage with Muslim Americans. They 
have, they need our help just as much as we need them. And I'm very hopeful Donald Trump will be having Muslims on his, uh, you know, within his administration to guide him. I hope they'll be part of his national security team and his foreign policy team because they can't afford to just go after one religious group. One in four human beings on earth is a Muslim. One in every four human beings cannot be a terrorist. If that was the case, we would have very serious problems in our world, and that's not the case. Our religion teaches peace and justice, and we hope to be a part of the solution. What about those people, though? When you just said here, your religion teaches peace and justice, you know as well as I do, there are people sitting in this audience right now who say, that's not true, that's false. This is a religion that talks about death, talks about destruction, talks about even more than an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. How do you turn those people around? Can you turn those people around? Well, I think there's a lot of misinformation about Islam. The whole concept of Islam means peace. And you can't establish peace by murdering people. I mean, the whole justice is such a central component of our faith. Uh, but the thing is that there is so much misinformation about our faith. Everybody focuses on war laws that are being misinterpreted and misused by several people. Uh, just because terrorists choose to pervert the teachings of Islam to justify their criminal atrocities doesn't make it okay. And blaming all, the whole religion for the acts of a few is not the right solution. You, you mentioned something a little bit earlier here when you talked about what Muslims in this country would want. Donald Trump, when he talks about handling immigrants from France, Germany, and Spain, he uses the phrase extreme vetting. He says it's tough words, extreme vetting. Would you say that there are, in your experience and in your opinion, that there are Muslim Americans here in this country right now who would have absolutely no trouble with that whatsoever, that even they would stand behind extreme vetting if it would root out the killers, root out those who are destroying the religion, and make sure that they either come to justice or they never get a chance to walk into this country? Yes, I agree with that, and several Muslim American strengths stand in solidarity with that. We don't want more terrorism. We don't want to see people murdered. We want to see a safe, secure America. And I hope that Muslims will be part of his national security discussions. But do you think they will? I, I guess that's the question, because there are so many critics of Donald Trump who say that he has so offended so many people that they would never trust him from African Americans to Hispanics to Muslim Americans, whatever, that they would never trust him. But but you believe otherwise. Well, but you, you given say the you political environment Right. But given the political environment right now, I think the DNC is handing over the election to Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump has a very good chance of winning in November. And if we choose not to engage with him, it's detrimental to our communities. And therefore, I'm trying my best to work within the Muslim community to try to convince them and to hopefully earn their votes for the Republican Party. And uh, it is challenging. I face a lot of backlash as well within the Muslim community. But I think it's well worth it because I feel like if we're not at the table, then we're definitely on the menu and we don't need to get off of that. Let me get a couple of phone calls in here from people who are listening to this conversation and they want to get involved. Pat is in Gaylord, Michigan. Pat, you believe that the moderate Muslims need to protest terror. The protests are already out there. Would you want them to do something further? They are. Where sure. and when and how many? Pardon me, I haven't seen any. Well, actually, there was one. Uh, I believe it was near the White House this weekend. There were about 20 people there. Heck no, this is a joke. I was evacuated from the tube when, uh, on July 21st, 2005, when the homegrown Muslim young men standing on their Koran tried to blow us up once again. This was following, two weeks following, 34 people being murdered by Muslims, quoting their Koran, and many maimed. Okay, let me get Saba to get in here, because Saba, her point is well taken by many people who believe that the peaceful Muslims here in America are not protesting, are not speaking out. Well, and, I was, and, and are not, I hold spoke. on, hold on one sec, go ahead, Saba. Sure. No, Saba, go I ahead. spoke up at the rally that we held on Saturday evening in front of Capitol Hill. There were thousands of Muslims out there protesting against terrorism, and we had several faith leaders. The media didn't really cover the uh, event, and we, we were a little disappointed because we did send out a lot of press releases and invited several folks. But our voices are not getting out. But at the same time, I do understand where this lady is coming from. But blaming Muslims for the act of terrorists is not the solution. Just because some Christian decides to pick up the Bible and go commit murder, 
you wouldn't blame the whole religion for it. There are there are verses about stoning, and you know there are a lot of things that are in the Bible as well that we may have questions with too. But that doesn't mean you're going to blame the entire faith. And I know as a person of faith that the no religion teaches you to murder. Every religion wants peace and justice, and God will hold them accountable. If somebody is misusing religion to commit murder, they would need to be held accountable, and we cannot blame the entire faith for that. All right. Thank you very much for the call. Donna's in Frederick, Maryland. Donna, I only have 15 seconds. Why do you think Donald Trump can win the Muslim vote? Quickly. He was very smart with how he appealed to uh, the entire demographic. And I want to appeal to Muslims at large that perhaps maybe you need a reformation with your biblical teaching. That would eliminate the radical element. Okay. And that's a big we'll have problem. to let that stand because, again, we're out of time. Thank you for the comment. Saba, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. We're going to have you back again and continue this Thank conversation. You. That I promise you. Thanks so much. Stay with us. More coming up next when it comes down to another type of cheating from the Russians on the hard line.